So we've been hearing about Seattle and the King County's real estate market, or housing market, really starting early. Often in the housing market, you hear about the March 15th or the spring selling season. Well, it appears that Seattle and Washington is slightly ahead of that. So we're going to talk to Beth Traversal, see what's going on, see if anything has started, because maybe, just maybe, this will give us insight to what will be coming in March. So Beth, welcome to the show. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So happy to be back here. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we got to talk about your market. You, I think this discussion is really going to help me understand what might be happening across the country for the normal spring selling season. So let's remind people what market you're in and right. probably talk about why it starts early and then let's see what you're seeing. Yes. Yeah, so I am in the Seattle market on the east side. Um, and so basically it's just the greater Seattle areas where I live and work. And that's where my expertise is for the last 25 years selling real estate. And what we brokers into this area, we've always seen what we call the January bump. And for me, I always say to my clients that spring starts in January in the Seattle area. And the reason behind that is that the, what I've seen just working with the logistics of how it ends up shaping up to be that way is inventory dwindles down over the holidays and everyone is distracted. Sellers are wanting to get past the holidays before listing their home. Um, buyers are ready on Christmas day. They're ready to start looking, but there's nothing to buy. We just looked at the charts and the inventory crazy low. And so they want to buy, there's nothing to buy this year. We have a little more spillover, like everything, not everything sold like the previous few years, but a couple of years. So there is a little bit of inventory, but we're saying we just looked at it still 1.65 months, you know, so it's right. low inventory. And a lot of that inventory has kind of been on the market for a while and doesn't have the same allure as a, as a fresh new listing. So, uh, and my my friends at Zillow told me that, that, that that's Christmas day is one of their busiest days on the site because people are like, okay, we're done with all of this. All the stress of the holidays is over. They're sitting around, you know, playing with their new iPad or whatever and going on Zillow and looking on their new phone and checking out the houses and they're ready to shop. Buyers are ready a lot. It's a lot easier for a buyer to get ready than it is for a seller because sellers are like, okay, now we got to pack away all this stuff. We got to, we've lived here for 15 years. We got to clean up all this stuff. We got to stage the house. We got to replace the carpet. We got to get all of our things out, whatever their, their, their work list is. It's not an instant thing where they can just go, okay, we're ready. Let's list. Mm -hmm. There's a delay and that creates some tension in the market. And we see that cycle happen with every, every, you know, that seasonality happen. Um, so by the time we get to January, the few listings that are coming on tend to get more interest and activity. And then um, by the time we get to February, that's when we really see more people, the more inventory starting to come on. So, and then March and April tend to be pretty strong too. Although last year um, we did see things start to taper off around mid April, which was a little early for us. So by the time we get to late spring, it's kind of already over that, 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 in you know the intense selling season really is kind of stacked toward the beginning of the year so the big just, question yeah yeah so i just want to make sure i understand because i love how you laid that out because i think that's how it'll happen for the country just the starting point will be different mm -hmm. so again if you were looking in your market or your buy box would be with the first kind of inkling that the surge has started being maybe attendance at open houses or offers because again it starts with yeah. the buyer right the buyers are easier All to, buyer to get started. Driven all buyer driven. Okay. So if sellers had their way, we would always have a seller's market and everything would all, you know, so the, <laughs> it's the buyers that control the market. Honestly, they do. Mm -hmm. So and it's good, interesting that you mentioned those things because I just had a listing that came on um, last week that um, we had very high attendance to the open house. There was groups of people waiting. And we saw this with some of the other listings that weren't listed last week. They've been on the market for longer we saw across the board, huge surge in open house attendance where groups of people waiting at the door, even if houses that have been on the market for 60 days plus, we've been seeing wow. that. So people are out there looking at what's available with fresh motivation, it seems like. However, what I'm not seeing, the real test is when bidding wars start to happen. Right. And if when bidding wars start to happen, it's interesting how quickly the psychology changes or people shift from the I'll wait and see mentality to I need to get in there now or I'm going to lose a house. Right. And I'm not seeing that in where I am in my area quite yet. 
Although that listing that I brought on, we did get an excellent offer within two days pending done um, mm. where it might have been a little longer before that, you know, back in November. So that to me is an indication that, okay, buyers are here and they're ready to strike. Some of my colleagues over on the Seattle side are, I know one of my friends over there, it sells a lot of houses in Seattle. It has, has a listing that's doing an offer review date today. We're, he started setting the offer review dates again, where it's like, okay, we're reviewing offers on Tuesday. That was wow. what we saw a year ago when, when the bidding wars happened. And he said five to 10 offers coming in on his listing. So um, I'm not seeing that where I am yet, but that's very important that, you know, so for people out there watching, work closely with the agent who's very intricately involved in this from the day to day and can tap into other people in the network and see what's going on out there in your specific market, because it's very critical to know, are we in, an, in, a, in, a, in a situation where we're going to be potentially getting multiple offers? Then it's time to think about shifting strategies because the strategy is very different for, if we're going to be expecting that versus not. And I'm not personally as a listing agent yet, anticipating bidding wars. I think that's a leap that I'm not ready to take. Um, um, and I can already hear in the comment section down there, people saying, oh, blah, 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 blah. I call it like I see it. I'm not to look at my playlist. You know, like if I see yes. things are happening the other way, I'm the first to say that, but I'm right. reporting what I'm seeing here. And it's not what everybody wants to hear. I know that, but I'm not saying that we're going back to the, the intense. We're not seeing that it's not going to be 40% no, I, I think what we're I think yeah. what we're we're finally seeing, Beth, is what I've been calling for, and is it's already started, whether people like it or not. This is the bottoming process. Mm -hmm. I called four million, three point nine million transactions for the country. We're basically there. Inventory went up. I forget what it was, almost four hundred percent in your market, but but you still have one point seven months of supply. Yeah. This is not a normal market. And a lot of it is because sellers are locked in. They don't have to sell, wish pricing, all these things we talk about. But some transactions will happen. Uh, I do think watching open houses, if I was in another market, I would actually track that. Mm -hmm. I think what you're telling us to look for is behavior in Q1 is different than Q4 behavior. Said another way, shopping around the holidays is different than shopping after the holidays. So folks, Go do the work. Continue to see what's going on. See if open if open houses are better attended. That means more people are shopping. It doesn't mean bidding wars. It doesn't mean five hundred thousand dollar earnest money deposit released yeah. to the seller. None of that stuff should happen. That was unhealthy. But I think housing. You know, by the way, rates are falling. So again, mm -hmm. all these things are coming around that housing yeah. will bottom uh, at least at the transaction. Yeah, level. I think time on market once that starts to slash you know if we go from 20 days on market to three uh, that's a big whoa. indicator <laughs> oh do i i tell you Beth, if we go from 20 days on market to 16 that'll shock people yes because it's supposed to be going the other way yes it's so, supposed to be yeah. going the other way but i'm i'm seeing i think it's going to go down so you know in november we had about in my area we had about 14 days on market and it went up in december to about 22 days on market um, which is a decent percentage yeah. jump. That's a 50% that's, jump. Yeah. But I think I was just because of the holidays and it's just exactly. December is always a bit of an oddball month. And I think that January now we're like off to the races, but you don't see the January numbers in, in the close numbers until February, right. March. And it is going to look negative year over year because, sure. you know, we, we had to. things jumping up 40% year over year, which was just unprecedented. We'll probably never mm -hmm. see that again. Yeah, and should. not in my lifetime, probably. And so when we're, we're up against that, even a 10% gain, I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm not calling a 10% gain, but I'm saying like, if we went up 10%, it still is going to be, you know, 25% below maybe what we had last year, potentially. So yeah, it's going to, it's going to be negative numbers, even if we are seeing a surge. So it's going to be really confusing. I think if you just look on the surface, but, and in the headlines, but that's why that's why it's very important to know what's going on on the ground. So whether yeah. it's through your your agent and your network or just getting out there and witnessing it yourself. Yeah. So folks, I, I think most I think every part of the country is going to have a spring selling season. I actually think it's going to land like a thud. In fact, it's one of my 12 calls. What does that mean? It means a boring market. Transactions are still going to be about four million. I think by the end of the year, maybe we're at four point three prices kind of boring for the country up and down in different markets, but 
it's um a lot of people are calling for this crazy cascading crash that just never ends. Sorry, it's just about over. Yeah. yeah. It, I know, you know, and I I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. Those that are out there trying to time the market, but we've always said that you can't. It's not like anybody ever taps you on the shoulder and says, "Here we are." You know, yeah. here it's now. It's a process, and it kind of it doesn't happen all in one day. You know, but it just kind of bumps around a little bit, and then changes in in some significant manner. But I think that's where we are right now. We're sort of at that kind of bumping around spot where, um, things are going to start trending up with this with the selling season and the interest rates improving. Um, yeah. Is it going to be 2021, 2022? No. Um, and I personally am relieved for that. I don't uh-huh. think that that was, not that healthy. was not a, a healthy dynamic to have in, in any market. So um, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to something that's a little more balanced. I love a balanced market where buyers have a decent chance of getting a decent offer accepted. Sellers are realistic. They're ready to to price their house appropriately and accept proper terms, normal terms. And it's a win-win for everyone. The seller gets to move, buyer gets a spot. Sorry, I didn't turn my phone off. I usually do. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. My bad. But I'm looking forward to a more balanced spring. And for us, like we're already in the spring, like I said, you know, our, our pre-spring, late winter. That's awesome. Well, Beth, I appreciate you coming back uh, every week. If somebody wanted to buy or sell or just network with the best of the best, how should they follow you? Yeah. So if People can reach out to me through my website, BethTraversoGroup.com, and also can message me on social media. I'm all over the place and easy to find. Thank you so much.